Welcome to this edition of Canola TV, featuring the latest information on producing and marketing winter canola in the Southern Plains. Canola TV, a service of PCOM, Producers Cooperative Oil Mill. Hi everybody, welcome back to another edition of Canola TV. Pleased to be along with you today. Joining us here in Altus at the second of two Winter Canola Conferences is Chad Godsey. Chad, let, let's talk a little bit about the subject that you were visiting with producers about up in Enid as well as here in Altus. And that's uh, what we learned about the varieties that were planted in last year's uh, trials. Okay, uh, really when we look back at last year, it really, the hybrids uh, versus open pollinated varieties, the hybrids really tended to perform a lot better. And a lot of that had to do with just the growing season we had, you know, warm warm winter, but a little above average temperatures in winter, spring, and, and early summer. Uh, and most areas of the state really had a, enough moisture, so we had high yield potential, high yielding conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the, the hybrids really tended to perform uh, overall a little bit better than the varieties. Now I know that uh, as you looked at the various uh, varieties throughout the state, you actually had what half a dozen locations this year that you were looking at. Uh, yes, yeah, we we harvested uh, I think believe six uh, six locations. We did lose a, f a few due to early freeze and, and just not timely planting, waiting for waiting for moisture to plant, and it was a little too late, so we didn't plant. Uh, but yeah, overall we had uh, six replicated trials in the western part of the state. Now you know, as you think about the varieties, I know that uh, we're seeing more companies start showing interest, and really I guess we started with maybe one or two companies. Now we've got what a half a dozen. Yeah, it's it's been tremendous the last the last five or six years. Like you indicated, we just started with one or two companies with with a little bit of interest, and now we have more and more entries from more and more uh, companies. Uh, and it's just the, the the increase in yield potential uh, has been tremendous the last three or four years with the with the uh, commercially available cultivars we have coming out. What what are some of the things we're really starting to see these varieties do compared to say a half a dozen, you know, six eight years ago? Probably the biggest thing is, you know, back back a, ha a half dozen years or six eight years ago, you know, we had we still had winter hardiness issues, uh, and really with all the commercially available varieties and hybrids that we have now, really winter hardiness is, is isn't that big of an issue for Oklahoma. Now it may be in Kansas, but uh, but really for most parts in Oklahoma, winter hardiness is not an issue. Uh, and then I think that just the increase in yield potential uh, of these newer varieties and hybrids, uh, in some cases, I, I think you could say it's almost doubled uh, from, from what we started six to eight years ago. You uh, had some recommendations to these producers about what they need to be thinking about as they try to select which types or which varieties of canola they may try to try to grow this year. Yeah, a couple of the big things, of course, you, you know, looking at past yield history is, is very important over multi-year. Uh, period uh, and then really just pick varieties or hybrids that fit your management strategy if, if you're an experienced canola grower uh, that's shooting for that 2,500 3,000 pound yield goal uh, you know a hybrid may be a better option for you uh, and then in two I guess the next biggest point I would point out or recommend is just to diversify in your in your selection a lot of times we'll see we'll see producers select one variety or one hybrid and plant that on all the all their acres uh, really you know our, our summer or our, our growing seasons are so drastically di different from year to year mm -hmm. uh, like everybody knows it, it just depends on what kind of year we have is going to determine what, what variety or hybrid will perform better. So that, that diversifying your variety and hybrid selection is really important. And of course you can now actually get some variety or some differences in the uh, actual number of days that it takes to mature these crops. So you can get some, some differences and spread out the harvest a little bit. Yeah, and that, that is critical and that's something that, you know, six to eight years ago we didn't have that difference in maturity. And that's, uh, and that's you know, we always tell guys to think about, you know, from planting until harvest, to have, have a plan lined up and, and ready to go. And, and yeah, this, kind of getting staggering that harvest date on some of those things that that can be very important uh well one other question uh, explain to us and tell, tell our folks about what we mean when we say cert okay uh cert would be would be it, it is resi it has su residual tolerance 
Uh, so now that does not mean that you can apply an SU herbicide over the top. Uh, but if you have a past history of applying SU herbicides on, on a winter wheat, uh, which, which really most fields in Oklahoma do have that history within the last two years. So if, if an SU herbicide has been used in the past on that field, you can plant an SU uh, or a CERT uh, tolerant variety or hybrid on that, on that ground and be okay. Uh, if you if you would choose not to plant a cert uh, a variety or hybrid, you most likely would see a, a significant re reduction in stand and may not have any germination at all. Right. Okay. Appreciate it. Chad. Appreciate your time today. Chad Godsey joining us today from Oklahoma State University. I'm Ron Hayes for Canola TV. Canola TV, a service of PCOM and produced by OklahomaFarmReport.com.